Good evening and welcome to Superintendent's Corner. My name is Richard Sapphire, the Superintendent of Schools. And uh, this show is an opportunity to talk about the school district itself, its successes, its challenges. Most importantly, uh, discussing things with the folks that are most responsible for making things happen in the district. And tonight we have a member of the Gloucester High School uh, Science Department, the program leader and chemistry teacher, Carol Cofaso. Carol, welcome and thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Great. Sapphire. Most appreciated. Um, as is customary, let's start a little bit with an introduction and just some biography. Tell us about yourself a little bit. Um, well, I went to the University of Connecticut. As yes, we, we are fellow were. Huskies. <laughs> <laughs> Go Yukon. And um, so I graduated from the School of Pharmacy there, and mm -hmm. I worked as a pharmacist for many years before becoming a teacher. So mm -hmm. I've been at Gloucester High since the year 2000. Uh, and did you practice pharmacy in Massachusetts? Uh, yes. Uh, and and I lived in Florida for a while, so uh, I also practiced there. Uh -huh. But I did give that license up not too long ago. Uh -huh. Uh, I continue to hold my pharmacy license in Massachusetts, and I work a, a little bit occasionally, but mm. I'm not not working regularly at this point right. in pharmacy. Right. So you were pharmacist, and uh, then decided to go into teaching. So those are always interesting stories. <laughs> so can you tell us about that a little bit? Well, um, my daughter was a middle school student, mm -hmm. and there was a severe shortage of science and math teachers. So. I, Natalie Daly is a family friend and she was a teacher oh. in the system when I went through middle school mm -hmm. and Natalie encouraged me to apply and I did apply and when I applied it was a little bit funny because they needed both math and science teachers and they said which do you want to do I said well I'll do whatever you need the mm -hmm. most and instantly they said science mm -hmm. they said mm -hmm. it would be harder to fill the science position oh. So luckily I got in the science department. Right, right. <laughs> and lucky for them too. And you would have been uh, as adept uh, in teaching math as well? I love math too. Ah. I love math too. But I love to get to do all the labs. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the advantage. Right. I mean, if students were building uh, little houses in, in algebra or in, or in um, trigonometry, that would be one thing. And it's actually perhaps something that we should do given the the pacing of the curriculum and all that, but at least science, and I'm an ex-science teacher myself, I taught biology for a number of years, uh, the opportunity to get into the lab and do things is not only good for the kids, but it's good for us as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Lab day is always the best. <laughs> so we know that uh, the work of doing the labs fascinates you, but uh, you've obviously had a, um, a relationship with chemistry for a long period of time, so as a pharmacist and as a chemistry teacher, uh, what's so fascinating about chemistry? Oh, it's just... The possibilities are endless as far as the chemicals go and what what are the results, whether it's in a, in a test tube and you're looking for a color change, whether it's in a person's body and you got to track down the exact science of what's going on. And now with personalized medicine, how interesting mm. is this that you can, it, they're, they're all of the new drugs that are coming out that are just individualized. Mm. So incredible. Right. right. The whole pharmaceutical field is becoming increasingly more what we would like to do in education, differentiated, if you will. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Um, let's talk just a little bit about the uh, department itself because it has, in fact, um, quite a bit of acclaim and renown over the last couple of years, and that's across the board. Um, so a number of, of uh, members of the science department have uh, received all sorts of mention, awards, recognition, state, national, and otherwise. Can you speak to those just a little bit? Sure. And if you have a list, that, that's fine. Okay. We have a very talented science department. Mm. All the members are just gifted in their own ways, and, and then their subjects, they're experts. So, but among the recent awards, Eric Lee and David Enos were um, named champions of, for biotechnology educators award. Mm. Last year they won that for the first time it was ever given to a teacher. Uh, they had written a grant, they were instrumental in writing a grant for 110,000 from the Mass Life Science mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. enabled us to have state of the art facilities at, at Gloucester High. So um, with that we got 
many different pieces of equipment, updated spectrophotometers, electrophoresis chambers for DNA, vertical electrophoresis chambers for DNA and protein assays. Now, these help to separate out, you put something, a, a, whatever it is you're examining, you put it through some sort of a medium. Yes. Could be grass, um, grass, could be gas, could be liquid or, or something right. along those lines, and it actually separates. So it's in a way, it's a chemical fingerprint for a particular yes. chemicals and the like. And yes. The, yeah, okay. And so, and then there's a thermocycler that will, um, for PCR, that's going to amplify the DNA when you're studying it. Mm -hmm. So we have some of the latest right. things. So uh, the PCR is polymerase chain reaction, which is a Xerox machine for making DNA, yes. correct? Yeah. So the thermocycler does what? It's going to amplify. Meaning? So when you go to to see your results, it's easier to see the results. Uh, uh, so, you so know, in a way, it's like putting it under magnifying glass. Yes, exactly. I don't know if anybody's at all interested, but I'm really <laughs> fascinated by this. So the it, more wonkish we get, the better it right, is for me. Right. Well, and then we have Vernier, um, some Vernier lab equipment that came from that grant, mm -hmm. and Gloucester Education has been most generous over the years. We have some equipment. It's just coming in now for the physics department, right. as well as we've had the Vernier equipment in chemistry for many years. Right. Um, the uh, the new physics um, materials, particularly for robotics, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to the tune of around thirty eight thousand um, dollars. The the thirty eight thousand is for physics, mm -hmm. and the the robotics or engineer that other part I think was even more. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So. Um, it, it, we were very lucky in a couple of fields. Right. And now, didn't you all also order some, and it could be the veneer, but didn't you also order some textbooks for chemistry a, a year or two ago as well? Uh, the chemistry ones we've had for a few more years than mm -hmm. that. We did get new chemistry last year for mm -hmm. the uh, first year students. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was a few years before that that we got the AP ones, and that has an online homework system, which individualizes and there's tutoring that happens, there's feedback, there's individualized mm -hmm, questions, mm -hmm. kind of like the drugs. Mm -hmm. You make a certain mistake and the system is going to know right away what the mistake is. So you don't even need to wait until the next day for feedback from your teacher. You're getting feedback instantly. Wow. So that program is uh, also what we just got for the physics. Mm -hmm. So the AP physics as well as the first year chem mm -hmm. and our Honors Bio students have that program as well. Mm -hmm. We've had much success for that. I've used that, that system with the AP Chemistry for many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when the kids go to university, they're used to the system, and that's another advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So, great. Yeah. Now, uh, in the physics, we were talking about some of the awards uh, that our science department has received, and you just mentioned a number of things in the Life Science Awards. Mm -hmm. But our, our physics team has also received state and national and perhaps even international recognition as well over the last year or so. Absolutely. Kurt Lichtenwald, John Barry, and Dave Schneider mm -hmm. were all part of, they won the International Engineering and Technology Program Excellence Awards. Mm -hmm. And they also won Mass Tech Engineering and Technology Program of the Year. Mm. Separately, Kurt Lichtenwald won the International Engineering and Technology Teacher Excellence Award, as well as the Mass Tech Engineering and Technology Teacher of the Year. Yeah. So um, the program as well as yeah. Kurt individually. Yeah. That was and really Extraordinary nice. accomplishments yeah. and the like. Yeah. Huh. That's and great. Rachel Rex mm -hmm. um, won an or honorable mention 2018 Ocean Stewardship Award. She's done quite a bit of work with her ecology class, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she sometimes adds in her ocean studies and other classes too, but she's done things on uh, sea rising and right. climate change, and she, she's had a few... Um, community events where mm -hmm. many people have participated in addition to see the students present their work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've been to um, almost each year now since I've been around, I've gone to the sea level rise presentation that the, the students provide and uh, there's uh, interesting data that they can speak to and then they can start talking about streets that we're familiar with <laughs> and what might happen if and when uh, you right. know climate change uh, should occur. Um, that allows us to segue into um, the next question, okay. uh, climate change does. Um, and I, I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say that there's a sense that in some quarters, uh, science is, in our society, is sort of being 
uh, scrutinized, being questioned, uh, in some instances being rejected, uh, the fact that uh, we have moved out of the Paris talks and the climate change type of issue. So there are some attitudes out there which a scientist and a science teacher would certainly want to uh, challenge. I guess my question, and if you want to elaborate in any other uh, area on this, is do you have a sense of what students' attitudes are uh, toward the study of science? I think we generally see, you'll see kids who who just are not, they don't lean towards the sciences. Mm -hmm. But we have many students who just love science. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have other students who didn't know they love science and then they start doing the things in life science or biology or chemistry and then they get to physics maybe and they just love it. Mm. They might love robotics and the engineering and tech. So what we're doing in our program is we're making the kids f find their passions mm. and Overall, we have more and more students selecting majors in majors and careers in science. Mm -hmm. It seems like we've been plugging away, and it seems like we're turning and yeah. increasing those numbers. Yeah, great. To use a surfing metaphor, uh, if we're teaching well, we can increase the likelihood. You know, a surfer catches a wave and they drop in, mm -hmm. and there's that mm -hmm. sensation of dropping in. That's pretty exciting, and you can see that in. Uh, in children and their disposition and their approach, their attitude towards what is they're learning. It could be a wall at first because all that stuff, the information is coming at you. But uh, with the kinds of hands-on work that's done and the lab work that's done and they begin to see the essence of what something is about, uh, that's when you can capture them mm -hmm. and send them on a, on a good and proper path, which is really great. Um, speaking of, of that and captivating students, are there any recent developments? There may not be. Um, but are there any recent developments in science instruction that you've sort of gravitated to and considered incorporating? Or is it a matter of just honing and refining, you know, what you've cultivated over the years? No, I would say there's always new. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the focus at the high school right now, uh, Mr. Cook, our principal, it's inquiry across the board. Yes. So science leans that way anyway. Mm -hmm. And we generally try to do a lot of inquiry things. So over the years, probably some of us have adjusted away from the old quote cookbook mm -hmm, labs mm -hmm. so that you're transitioning to uh, more open-ended and yes. letting the kids kind of drive where it goes or come up with the actual procedure. Right, so can you give me an illustration? And, and I'll give you an illustration if I can remember it. Okay, well, <laughs> One of the things I do is I might explain, you know, density is a very straightforward thing that people know mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. you can't measure density, you must measure two things. So you're measuring a mass, you're measuring a volume, and you must do division. So if we just did a unit on sig fig, significant figures, there are rules mm -hmm. that you have to use. And those rules are important with science because you mm. need to report your answer and people need to read from the answer how close you really know you are to right. that. Right. So that underlies it. So when you come to a density lab, instead of me providing you with a lab, I would say, write a procedure and tell me how you're going to um, calculate the density of these items. Right. Right. So that's a straightforward, easy, across the board adjustment. Right, but it puts the onus on them to think through exactly how it should be as opposed to I'm gonna bake a cake and this is what I need to do. Uh, I used to conduct a lab that I really liked. Uh, the students would work with uh, yeast and molasses and the molasses was in different concentrations up into 100% molasses. Mm -hmm. And they would see the amount of um, growth of, this, of the yeast giving off CO2, whatever mm -hmm. the measurement was. And it would go like this until the 100% molasses and then it would crash. Mm -hmm. and you know, I didn't give them the answer, they, you know, <laughs> but they would then have to design uh, some experiments. Well, maybe if we fool around with this sugar or that sugar, because we would talk about what's inside the molasses and so on and so forth. And the experiments would repeatedly fail, <laughs> but it was what the scientific process is all about. Right. And then we'd come to realize that there were certain agents within the molasses in certain concentrations, which, which would impact the metabolism of the yeast and so on and so forth. But it was that process of exploration. And you could still do something like that, even though there were 45 minute periods. Right. I know that you only have one uh, period a week that's 60 minutes, and maybe you, I guess you orchestrate your labs if you can for that day when there's 60 minutes or so. But um, 
you, you can do experiments over time is what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you can set up and then come in and you can prepare ahead. So, you know, I think basically what you're saying too is if you're a science teacher, you have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, right. You can't, you, you, you can't just say, oh, we, we can't do labs because of this. Right. You have to find a way to make right. it work. Right, right. You have to be flexible and you have to, have to know how to stir things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's uh, talk something that's a little bit more dry, if you will, and um, what are some of the requirements for uh, science at Gloucester High School? At Gloucester High School, you need to have three years of science, uh, and you need to pass an MCAS exam in order mm -hmm. to graduate. So um, those are the requirements. We have many students who select science courses as their electives each year, and mm -hmm. this will actually be the first year that we're offering a recognition at graduation. So the students who have um, 35 STEM qualifying credits Science, will get technology, a, engineering, and math. Yes, they'll get a, a, a particular recognition at graduation. Hmm. So that's very exciting for us. Right. We've been working on this, towards this, for a while. A couple of three years, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this 2019 will be the first class mm -hmm. to... Uh, reap the benefits of their work in, in getting the recognition. Right. Whereas previously the students just reaped the benefits by virtue of what they got to experience right, in the right. science classes. And uh, of course it's, uh, in addition, it, the, the first qualification is always, as you said, what they've learned. But in addition, uh, they're going to show a strong scientific background as they apply for further colleges. And we're probably talking about uh, students that are looking for a four-year college. Mm -hmm. And then to get that uh, acknowledgement and recognition upon graduation is always a nice little right. perk as well. That's Very really exciting. Good. good. Um, we have a couple of pathways as well uh, at the high school, which is, quite frankly, as far as I'm, I'm familiar with, is, is relatively unique. Maybe less so now, but when I first came on board, I go, wow, they have these, oh, well, we actually instituted it, I think within the first couple of years when I was here, the high mm -hmm. school uh, had chosen to do that. Can you speak about the pathways? Sure. Um, so since you need to pass an MCAS test, mm -hmm. uh, generally the students are selecting the biology route uh, and then perhaps going on to the traditional chemistry and physics. But as well, those students are able to uh, once you pass your MCAS, you could supplement whatever you want with, quote, the other side of the pathway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the engineering and tech classes, the robotics, because you're getting a foundation, if you're getting a foundation in bio, chem, and physics, then our engineering teachers are more than happy to have you in their classes. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we're just looking to increase all of the, the involvement in science. On the other side of the pathway, uh, engineering and technology, the MCAS test, um, students who take that then would move on to say the 3D printing, the robotics, the electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. So we have mm -hmm. a number of options. But we have students, you must know Austin Monell. Mm, oh yes. And Austin is incredibly gifted and talented and he's a hard worker. And he he's done much in the engineering and robotics side as well, he was my student in honors chemistry last mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. So this year he's in AP physics. Right. So it, it's we we want to encourage them to pull in as many science courses as possible. Mm -hmm. And as broad based as possible. Yes. Again, for the purpose of really learning and identifying where your strengths lie and where your interests lie. Right. right? We both had an opportunity at the Gloucester Education Foundation uh, annual uh, celebration a couple of Fridays ago. Austin Monell was one of the students that uh, did a presentation and it was it was modest. He only brought one drone with him, <laughs> which he himself had designed and built. And he had it floating and uh, hovering, uh, you know, by, by the lectern where he was speaking and stuff. I was fairly impressed to say the least. <laughs> Pretty extraordinary. And the kids that were there were very impressed. Mm -hmm. I heard they were all at, all saying they wanted to build their own drones. Right. <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> Another lifetime, perhaps. Right, if only we could have the time. <laughs> right, that's for sure. Um, I've got a list here about whether we should discuss some of the fundamental courses. Um, Percentage-wise, ballpark, um, how many students, ninth graders, um, take the biology versus taking the engineering one, engineering and technology? Um, I would say, and it's just ballpark, yeah, but I would say... Maybe 20% are in the engineering and tech. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so if you're in the en 
if you're in honors engineering and tech, you're taking the MCAS exam at the end of your first year. Right, as freshmen. Right. If you're in the um, CP1 or CP2, you take the engineering and tech MCAS after your second year. Mm. In on the on the biology uh, pathway, if you're in college prep or honors, you take the biology MCAS that first year. But mm -hmm. if you're in life science, uh, you then get a second year mm -hmm. and you're integrated into a regular biology class mm -hmm. and then you take the exam the second year. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a slight difference in the in the prep for the exam. Right. So mm -hmm. um, does that answer your question? I think it does, it <laughs> does. Uh, I was talking with, uh, with Principal Cook the other day and uh, we were discussing uh, equity and access to classes and all the rest and he was talking about the possibility of merging um, CP1 classes uh, with CP2 classes, the ability grouping levels that we have. And I think he mentioned that science already does that. Is that accurate? We only have CP2 level classes uh, through the sophomore year. Mm -hmm. So once you're done with the sophomore year, mm -hmm. Everything, everything is CP1 level right. and above. And um, what was the justification for that? Well, um, I, I'm fully in favor of it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just curious to hear it articulated. Once our students have spent several years with us, we would generally have them at the point where they would be functioning at the CP1 level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So our elective courses are CP1 level. We don't have anything lower. Yeah. So the requirement is three years for graduation. So our students are taking at least one year at CP right. level. Right. So they're they're getting to explore maybe some interesting topics after the hard first couple of years mm -hmm. of getting that groundwork mm -hmm. taken mm -hmm. care of. Mm -hmm. so. Good. Good. Uh, we had talked about this um, just a little bit before, but um, maybe we can elaborate a little bit on the because uh, I'm fascinated by the second part of this question, is what is the role of labs and what is the importance of lab reports? Well, you'll find a lot of variation here. Um, as you know, I think labs are very important. Mm. And if you're a scientist, you are using your lab notebook and you're writing down. So um, you'll find if you search online, there is at this point some variation with people are doing things online. But uh, what I've read recently is that some of the attempts to be online are not as successful. Mm. So um, it's a hard transition to get to go to online uh, science notebooks, right. uh, not only for in a classroom, but in, in facilities. Mm. So the traditional lab notebook is still the standard, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so um, what we in the science department, we don't want the students just spending a lot of time like typing up a report. Right. So not all of our reports are formal, mm -hmm. but it is important to do the processing. Yes. And if you're doing an experiment or an activity and you just do it, oftentimes surface, unless you delve down into it, you're not going to get all the takeaways. Yeah. yeah. So the lab report, has a very important function legally protecting you and your work, yeah. but also as far as making you think and process and get to another right, level. Really, it is about uh, it is about the the thought process itself. It's a manifestation of of what scientific thinking and scientific reasoning is all about. Absolutely, and it has. A, I'm sure it has its uh, its parallels in in writing, in mm -hmm. literature, narrative writing, persuasive writing, and and all the rest. But it, uh, in each instance, it is. Um, it's an embodiment, if you will, of the way yes. in which we think and approach uh, the work that we do. Yes. Yeah. It always used to drive me a little crazy when we'd ask the uh, students to draw conclusions and they would write, this was a very good lab. <laughs> 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 Usually it was the freshmen and I'd call them back in and say, I think you need to do a little bit more thinking about what exactly was, you know, you should have been gleaning from this particular right, right, lab. Right. One of the fascinations, and I'm an ex-high school principal, one of the fascinations um, with Gloucester High School is the, is the amazing variety of different courses and electives across the board. And that a small school, we really only have 800 kids at this point, uh, is able to maintain all those different options for all the right reasons. Science is no exception. 
on the contrary, it may be leading the, f the, the, the march toward options and opportunities. So can you just sort of mention some of the opportunities that our students have? Sure. We, um, the biotech program, we're really pushing developing that. Um, and right now we have a half year course. We're looking to expand mm -hmm. that to full year mm -hmm. and hopefully with a, maybe a couple levels, um, honors and, and CP. This is our inaugural run of the AP Environmental Science, which um, I, it's, I, I'm so excited that we're offering that course. Mm -hmm. It's really great. And we had some help with um, a grant from Cell Signaling on mm -hmm. a lot of our kits and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's well equipped this year. We're looking for increasing those numbers next year. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a lot of diversity. We have the forensics, we have ocean studies, mm -hmm. we have many of the engineering and tech courses, our 3D printing. With the astronomy class, uh, we just got part of the grant we got G from GEF. They bought us binoculars. Mm. Upcoming will be an astronomy club. Yeah, you can do a little bird watching. That's <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ms. King with the AP Environmental Science will be using the binoculars mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. when she, she frequently goes outside with mm -hmm, her class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we also have anatomy and physiology. Right. And last year we had another, an additional person who came in and did right. a, a segment on that through a GEF grant. Right, right. We, we're bringing in a lot of talent. We have a lot of talent there in the science department. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to make sure that we support everyone. Right, that anatomy and physiology piece is the kines kinesiology where students learned about, a little bit more about the physiology of muscle and bone, but in a particular relation to injury Injury, yes. how to prevent and if necessary how to treat injury if I'm not mistaken absolutely yeah. now how do you remember all of these things for the whole district <laughs> <laughs> I write them down <laughs> Uh, you mentioned a number of uh, partners and collaborators. We talked about the Gloucester Education Foundation. You mentioned cell signaling and mm -hmm. their contribution to the environmental sciences and the like. But there are a few others as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. Maybe we have about a minute and a half okay. left. Okay. Um, but uh, there's New England Biolab, the Gloucester Biotech Academy, and just, uh, just sort of. Yep. And uh, cell signaling also uh, bought us a water purifier, the mm -hmm. whole system. It's mm -hmm. an incredible system, um, and we're very lucky to have that and very grateful. Uh, Addison Gilbert Hospital has been very supportive. I did a, a thing with the middle school kids and Amy Donnelly last year, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. were so gracious to us and very kind mm -hmm. in uh, their time that they gave to us and their people. And Gorton's as well has given us glassware and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we're we're always looking to partner, and we'll, we'll uh, the science department isn't too proud to accept things so we're yes. happy to ha have anyone contribute to us mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we're looking for a little help with the clam shack if anyone right. uh, has some experience in uh because th they'll seed the clams after they uh grow the clams and then help with the uh, toxins in the mud hmm. so um but but those would be the major partners that right. we've worked with there's uh, so much going on in the science department and what's amazing is it's going on as high a level and with so much um, well-earned support, acknowledgement, recognition um, over the last uh, decade or so, you have played an instrumental role uh, in uh, making the science department what it is today. And now as program leader, you've had an opportunity to continue to steer it in the direction that it's heading. So on behalf of uh, you know the educational process, I wanna thank you so very, very much for all of your efforts and for the efforts of the science department at large. So thank you. Thank you, you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> and for this segment of Superintendent's Corner, I say thank you and good night.